Hello and welcome to the reading of Agastya Balipadu. Today's topic is Macrocosm and Microcosm from the book Agastya Purpose of Life. Mr. Sumati, please go ahead. Thank you. Microcosm and micro macrocosm and microcosm. A devotee asked the meaning of pindandam. Pindandam, microcosm, and Brahmanandam, Brahmandam, Brahmandam, sorry, macrocosm. Pindandam and Brahmandam. Yes, Pindandam and Brahmandam. Gajarat Swamigal, God of all gods, Gurudeva, salutations, salutations, bowing to you with love. I place this question at your feet with discipline and humility. Sage Agastya, this question was posed to you without you expecting it, isn't it? Such a question cannot be asked by ordinary people or understood by them. This is because it is the secret of a higher level of knowledge. You have not heard the word pindandam till now. I know that. So the explanation is given. There are two meanings in the word pindandam or microcosm. Pindam is that which is our soul and the andam is that which surrounds us. Brahmandam is, Brahmandam is something that man has not been able to imagine until now or it is something beyond the understanding of man. Pindandam can be likened to a little seed. It contains all the elements of a big tree hidden within it that cannot be seen. In the same way, the material and being in the universe is countless and remains invisible in the cosmos. Pindandam is a highly minute material of the Brahmanda or the universe or macrocosm. The universe itself is the minute particles that have emerged from Parabrahman. There are many suns in the universe and many planets revolve around them at a certain level. They are held together by a magnetic force in a particular space that is constantly revolving. The planets revolve around the sun. Everything about the planets goes according to a certain plan. There is a definite number of planets revolving around it. Everything about the planets goes according to a certain plan. There are a definite number of planets around each sun. Each planet has its own size, shape and volume. Each remains at a definite distance from the sun. Each revolves on a definite orbit, at times varying in distance and orbit. They also have a definite speed. This is the macrocosm or the Brahmanda. When a planet... Sumati, 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 let's yeah. talk a few things about what is going on here. One of the first Sorry. things that is happening is, if you see in the first, first, very first beginning, he says, Agastya says, this question was posed to you without you expecting it, wasn't it? So back, actually what happened was, a devotee, and I don't remember who exactly did ask this question, approached Gajra Swamigal and asked this question, explain microcosm and macrocosm. And this kind of things happened a lot. People would come and ask questions, and at that point, Gajra Swamigal wouldn't know the answer. And then what he would do is he would close his eyes, and then he would pray to his guru and ask for the answer. And this is the answer that Appa Agastya gave. So the, what he's talking about is microcosm and macrocosm. And he's explaining what pindandam means. Pindandam, he says, is pindam is the soul, the minute particle that is within each one of us uh, that came out of the Parabrahman. And then andam is the universe or everything that surrounds us. Now again, he says, Brahmandam is something that man has not been able to imagine until now. Now this is very important because as I uh, always am fond of giving the explanation or the example, if you look at the you know um, universe as you can see through, say, some space programs like NASA, 
it, it just starts with the earth and it keeps going on and on and you see the galaxies and it, it is never ending. So what Appa is saying is Brahmandam is beyond human comprehension. Nobody has been able to imagine it and that is so true because we don't know what is beyond what we can see through our telescopes and our satellites and our spaceships. So we are talking about something that cannot even be understood by the human intellect. Then he, then he says something very important. He says, Pindandam is like a little seed. It contains all the elements of a big tree hidden within it that cannot be seen. So as we have always talked about, if we con consider the Brahmandam as the ocean and the drop of water in the ocean as the Pindandam, the microcosm, then the essence of the ocean is present in the soul. So that is why it is important for each one of us to understand that as a soul, we have the essence of the absolute within us. We have the power that the absolute has for everything that can be done, except we do not know it. It is hidden within us, just like the big tree is hidden within a little seed. You look at a seed and you're thinking it's just a seed, but everything that it can become, that potential is within the seed. And here, the soul that is within each one of us has the same potential as the seed has of the tree, as we have of the microcosm or the absolute. So that is one of the explanations he's talking about. Then the other thing he says is, you know, the universe itself is because of the small, minute particles that emerge from Parabrahman. So at one point, I even I thought Parabrahman is the absolute, you know, but there is a lot more to this. He, we are just stopping at Parabrahman and from them, from him, the absolute started emitting all these minute particles. And then he talks about there are many suns in the universe and many planets revolve around them at a certain level. So at this point, we only know that our uh, you know, um, the, the universe exists. But later, we'll understand that Appa is saying there are many, many, many such universes around us. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. When a planet maintains a perfect relationship with the sun, there is equilibrium. If there is any mistake in any of the properties or characteristics of the planet, imbalance is created. This can induce upheavals or negative effects or catastrophes depending on the nature of the quality of the imbalance. So what do we learn from here? What we learn from here is everything in the universe is connected. So, you know, when we talk about, hey, today is Pornami, uh, today is the new moon, uh, today there's the eclipse. Why are we talking about it? We are talking about all that because we understand that Everything that happens at one level affects everything else in, in the, all other levels. We understand the quality of the universe or the creation where anything, anything that happens at one point affects everything else. That is why they say when there is a uh, you know full moon, it affects the uh, you know our uh, thinking of, of people become a little more crazier if they have some uh, you know mental issue, health issues, stuff like that. It is true. That is why we are talking about crystal healing, where you say, hey, you, you keep this crystal, which is, uh, you know, being energized, then it's going to uh, uh, help you. Then we talk about the pyramids and their power. Why are we talking about all this? And, and at the very basic level, think about it. The food that we eat, that has energy and that has a way of affecting us. Somebody cooks the food, and Appa Agastya says this, when somebody cooks the food with negative energy, with anger in their heart, then that is going to affect the person who eats it. So everything, if you consider it as energy, everything is permeating one with the other. And we, we, we get into this idea that 
a loka is one loka is above the other loka. A plane of existence is above another. It is not. It is all interconnected. They are all just different frequencies. And each frequency affects the other. So then he said, when a planet maintains a perfect relationship with the sun, there is equilibrium. But if there's any mistake, then in the properties of the characteristic of the planet, imbalance is created. Now that brings us to something very, very important. Why are we facing so many natural disasters? Lot of imbalances being created on the earth by what we are doing as human beings. That is why it becomes so very important that we go back to the basics of being good. And the good is a word that is so underrated in the world. But Appa Agastya talks about good all the time because what we think, what we do as individuals affects a community, affects a society and ultimately affects the world we live in. So in each one of these sentences that Appa is giving us in this particular thing, he is not only explaining about the microcosm and the macrocosm, is explaining about the individual and the effects of what happens to the individual and the world. Please continue. Yeah. The microcosm is the unit of the macrocosm. The entire human body, the physical body, is the microcosm. This body contains what up to now is known as atoms. Modern science explains that atoms contain energy particles known as electrons that revolve around the nucleus. Further, such elements contain atoms with different numbers of electrons and protons. The number, the revolution, the speed and the distance between the nucleus and the electron is maintained in a balanced manner. If an electron is ejected from the orbit of an atom, there is ionization. It is ejected from the orbit by losing or gaining an electron. The atom is split or ionized, resulting in positively charged and negatively charged energy bodies. This creates an imbalance. The human body is composed of several elements. Each element exhibits differences in the number of electrons and protons revolving around the nucleus. Each element can be compared to one universe. The sum total of the elements make up the microcosm. Thus, the human body represents the miniature of the macrocosm, which is the vast space filled with an unknown number of universes. This includes several worlds. So here, Appa is again stressing on the fact that everything that is in the macrocosm is replicated in the microcosm, which is the soul. Everything in the absolute is replicated in the, in the, in the human body or the soul and the human body that surrounds it. So, you know, he's also, in, in the previous paragraphs, he's talking about the atoms and electrons and neutrons. Even at this point, I don't understand that because I'm not a science person. And my father, even though he was a zoology professor, but Gajah Swamigal also did not know all these things. So these were actually explained by Agastya and written down exactly as he said. And maybe there will be one day somebody who knows these things who will be able to explain this further. Then he says, every single part of the human body also represents the universe. Why is he saying that? Because every little light drawn, as my Guru Yogananda calls it, is a component of the macrocosm. Every small particle in this entire created universe exists because of the absolute. Without the absolute, none of this would exist. But because it emit it or comes from the absolute, it has the essence of the absolute. Go ahead. Yeah. One common feature between the microcosm and the macrocosm is that both are very vast and include various subunits called solar systems. Both are created by the supreme power of the creator. Because the microcosm is the miniature of the universe, 
all the occurrences in the macrocosm, such as the changing of the position of planets in the solar system, is reflected in the changes happening within the atoms of the elements which make up the human body. There is a direct relationship between the workings of the human body and mind with the working of the systems of the universe. This is exactly what we already talked about. You know, how everything that is happening around us affects us. So imagine what we can understand from this or learn from this is each one of us has the power to influence the universe. And how is that? Positive thoughts. By being positive, by, you know, the, one of the actually um, uh, theosophists actually explained this too, that when somebody dies and we send loving thoughts to them, it acts like a feather and helps the soul move forward. You know, it, it, that loving thoughts have that good vibration. And, but when we cry and weep and, and uh, you know, scream, that acts like a magnetic force pulling that soul back. So we must remember how to behave in each circumstances. Everything has an effect. So if we get angry in a normal normal day-to-day -day life, walk away from there. Take a few minutes. Think about something else. Do anything that will distract you for a while and that will change how you react to that situation. So we must try each day to change ourselves and but contribute positively to the universe. Another thing Appa says here is, the human body represents the miniature of the macrocosm, which is the vast space filled with an unknown number of universes. This includes several worlds. Now, science hasn't found this out yet. They are still exploring space, but we know that our stages of the year they already have connected to the Supreme Consciousness, so they are aware of everything that is happening in the macrocosm. So they know and they are saying that there are different worlds out there. And this has been shared by Brother James and, and this has happened to me where we have all had dreams where we have dreamt of being in other planets uh, in, in uh, different kinds of bodies. And that is not just dreams, because we must remember that dreams are also sometimes vehicles of our consciousness, telling us something, giving us messages. So we must always continue to be very, very um, attentive to our dreams, because it they reveal some. You know, when we when we go to sleep, we just don't go to sleep. Our astral body is working. A causal body is still working. It is still aware. It is conscious. We just don't bring that consciousness back to the waking world when we wake up. So whatever we do, as long as we continue to keep our consciousness connected with the higher being, the faster is a progress in spiritual world. Please continue. Yeah. Balance in the universe is maintained by cosmic will. Whereas the units in the body are maintained by the force of the individual will. Very important again. Here, Appa is saying the cosmic will holds the creation together, maintains the balance. And he's saying human body is also maintained by the force of the individual will, but we are not aware of it. We do not know the power of our will. You know, we uh, hear about some superhuman feats of some somebody in danger. At that time, they're connecting to that power of the will and they're able to do something which they wouldn't do when in, the, in a normal consciousness, which most of us are always in, because we have a mind telling us, no, oh, don't do that. It's going to uh, uh, hurt you. That's going to affect you. No, you cannot do this. You cannot walk through walls. You cannot walk on water. So... We allow our minds to limit our consciousness. It's only when we can go beyond conscious, beyond minds that connect directly to our consciousness, then we have and we know that we have the force of the individual will that we can actually master. Right now, the mind masters us, but there will come a time when the soul masters everything. Now, why did somebody like Ramana Maharshi go through a surgery and not feel any pain? Because of that knowledge, because 
he became consciousness conscious of his self the real self so for that the ego and the mind need to step aside and that is one of the biggest challenges in spiritual life go ahead just as the sun is the central part in each universe, neutrons are the central part in each atom. When there is any imbalance in the working of the electrons, a change in electric and magnetic field is induced in the human body. This is responsible for production of heat and cold. If you go further into understanding electrons, you will see that it is made up of subtle vibrations which are beyond the scope of present-day science. Finally, everything is vibration. Thought is vibration. We have thoughts arising from the man. We also have thoughts arising from outside the man. So Beyond the human... Yeah. Here, sorry again. Um, but, you know, this is so important. That's why I thought I, I would interrupt you. He says, finally... Everything is vibration. So we had one of our brothers in the group ask, so what happens, you know, when there is pralaya, then everything uh, ends and, uh, you know, uh, the whole world is uh, destroyed. And the answer is this. We have to understand that what the sages called as maya. They call this entire universe as maya because they understand that creation is something which is not really happening or is, is physical and real as we all think. It is all like a like very simple example is like a dream. You know, when you dream, you, you create new things, you see things you have never seen in your life, you experience things, and you're involved in your dream. When you wake up, there is no longer all the places you saw. Nothing exists, right? So in a very simple way to understand this is to understand that all that seems real to us is vibration. Vibration creates the feeling of consciousness of, uh, you know, uh, the growth of the vibration, as I've explained earlier, the uh, more real things seem to us. The final the vibrations like in the astral plane or the causal plane, we are not able to see it or understand it because we are not yet at that level. So clairvoyance, clear audience, people who have these things, they're able to see higher vibrations. They're able to see dead people. They're able to see divine beings. Why is that? Because consciousness level has changed. So if you understand that, then we can understand these in two different ways. One is Understanding all this as a reality because of the mind and the ego, then understanding all this as a maya because of consciousness. That is the change we make as we travel on the path of spirituality. So, Appa says, finally, everything is vibration. And that is a truth that each one of us will have to understand. And that is why Everything we think affects us, affects our body, affects everybody around us. And as we read Adhastir Valipada, we will understand that the thoughts affect our body parts. You know, in, in science, they call it idiopathic or psychosomatic. Both these are, uh, mean, idiopathic means, oh, we don't know what the reason is. So that is why it's idiopathic. Psychosomatic is where the mind has influenced the body. It is not really happening in the body, but the body feels that something is happening. So we understand then that thoughts are so very powerful. That is why everybody who is a great leader in spirituality talks about positive thoughts. We must understand the whys before we understand the effect. And Agastya Valipadu is where Appa Agastya explains all this. And that helps us understand. Go ahead. Yeah. Beyond the human body, there is a mental body that can trap or get connected to higher knowledge, which if extended further can get connected to cosmic knowledge. 
ultimately both microcosm and macrocosm are the product of the supreme consciousness of the supreme one the age or lifespan of microcosm is very meager or low compared to the lifespan of the universe yeah this ends the chapter but we have a few more minutes and let's talk about it he says beyond the human body there is the mental body that can trap or get connected to higher knowledge so that is where we are talking about the different levels of consciousness where if we can fine tune the radio of our mind then we can connect to higher levels of consciousness then he says we can also trap thoughts that are arising from around us so you know when one person is thinking very badly about another person right those negative thoughts are being sent from one person to the other it is hovering around the other person the the moment the other person connects to this consciousness thinks about this person or or connects to that particular idea that affects that person so thoughts can affect another person so black magic as we call it is nothing but harnessing of this power using different other uh, things to harm another and apagastya says one of the worst sins anybody can do is is do black magic because what it does is controls the will of another human being now we must understand creation happened because of two important things expression and experience which we do in a in our in our dreams every day when somebody else forces it to stop they are taking away that freedom from that soul from experiencing and expressing and that is the worst crime of hum the human can do now on the other side if we can you know when we hear a beautiful devotional music and we get so involved in it and we start crying because you know that it touches our heart our consciousness is connecting to that divine being that we are talking about that time the power is starting to connect the more we do that and that is why our vedas our ancestors talked about mantras just chanting of mantras doesn't help chanting a mantra knowing the meaning understanding the beauty of it the power of it and connecting to the deity will help you but also apagastya says for some people you don't even have to have a mantra you can like gajarat swami did not know any mantras in his life but up in the podigai mountains he was laying down cold because he didn't take any of the warm clothes and he kept calling appa 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 and up, and he says in that words you connected to me so remember that if you can't remember a mantra it is okay if with your full heart you can call up appa gasti or any deity you can connect to the consciousness the longer and more we connect to the consciousness how can we do that we can do that by reading books when you are reading varipadi you are connecting with the uh, um, consciousness of appa agastya so that is why these truths start coming out you know they begin, begin to be revealed to you when you are reading autobiography yogi or the books written by yogananda you are connecting to the consciousness of yogananda when you are reading the bible which talks about the life of christ you are connecting to the consciousness of christ say say with with the um, uh, allah you know where as you are reading the book quran you start connecting with allah's consciousness so we must remember that when we are holding the sacred book in our hands whether it's the vedas upanishad vali vali pe vali padu we must connect to the consciousness and then in the end he says the age or life span of a microcosm is very meager or low compared to the life span of the universe for this we have to go back to understand what our vedas talked about the kalpa the seven manus the day and night of each manu which is, it makes up to 14 manu time and then the chaturyugas the yugas and then we come to our our knowledge of the centuries and the and the minutes and the years and all that it's just a vast vast universe of knowledge but all that we cannot learn by reading if we can only connect to our supreme beings 
if we can only connect to the divine beings, this knowledge will start flowering within yourself. That is Jnana Yoga. And Jnana Yoga is a something that which causes the knowledge to remove suffering from its very root from all our lives. And that is Agastya Balipadu. We just have a couple more minutes. So if anybody has any questions or thoughts, please share. This is Sumati, this is Gita. Any thoughts? But the couple of... Yeah, it was very beautiful um, understanding that, you know, like we have uh, universes within us. So probably, you know, it struck me. That is why they used to say like, you know, if there is a planet change, so there will be changes in your life. So I think that is why they used to, uh, I mean, that is how our... Uh, um, body interacts, our soul interacts with what is around us. So before we go, I, I just wanted to share something very simple to you. Uh, this is kind of connected to it, but it just came to me. You know, when people are very interested in going and buying stuff in the antique stores, you must be very careful because any object wo worn or used by a person has the energy of the person. That is why if you pick up something which has bad energy or negative energy, it's going to affect you. The same holds good for the relics or something from a good person. So that is why when you know people take a, a garment piece of some great yogi because that has the energy in it. So places have energy, things have energy, everything is energy. Be conscious of what kind of energy you're letting into yourself. By what you see, think, speak, hear, or touch. So with that, we will end today's session. Thank you all for joining. And uh, if anybody wants to reconnect just to chat outside the recording, please join back with the same link and we can talk without recording. Thank you.